All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a few more examples here. Now, this one is a little bit nastier. So the same rules apply to the prior video on this natural log stuff here that if you took the derivative, you could still do 1 over what's inside times the derivative of what's inside. But when I look at that, it's like, okay, this is, this is x cubed square root of 1 minus x. I want to make sure that we know that that is just x to the cubed. That's not cubed root. Um, it looks that'd be, you know, doable, but kind of nasty if I took the derivative of the inner function. So one option I could have here is to use my exponent rules, I'm sorry, my natural log rules first to expand this out. So first I'm going to use the natural log rule, the one that's ln of a times b is equal to ln of a plus ln of b. All right, so that was a rule that I learned. So in here, like the x cubed is like the a, and this whole square root thing is like the b. So I could expand this as natural log of x cubed plus natural log square root of 1 minus x. Okay? So that would be a good start for me right there, but I can even simplify this further using this guy, natural log of um, a to the n is equal to n times natural log of a, and on this first one right here, I could bring the 3 in front according to this rule, make it natural log, um, or 3 natural log x plus, and then I notice square root, that's the same thing as just writing this, I'm going to cheat because I have a whiteboard marker, that's the same thing as writing to the 1 half power. So I can bring that 1 half power out in front as 1 half natural log 1 minus x. So I've you know, done a couple steps here to simplify before I've even taken the derivative, but now I've got some super easy derivatives to take. Okay? So right here I've got y prime would be equal to, okay, 3 is a constant, it goes along for the ride. The derivative of natural log x is 1 over x, plus 1 half is a constant, it goes along for the ride. And then the derivative of natural log of 1 over x, I'm sorry, the natural log of 1 minus x, so it's 1 over what's inside times the derivative of what's inside. Got to be careful on this, the derivative of what's inside is negative 1. Okay? So right there, you know, I've got my derivative. Okay? Now I could simplify that and write it as 3 over x plus, and let's see here, I guess I'll make that a minus. So this negative sign will make a minus 1 half times 1 over 1 minus x. I don't know. You could distribute the 2 in if you wanted to on the bottom. It's up to you. But anyways, that's the derivative. So I don't know. I personally feel like it was a lot easier to take the derivative of this than it would have been to do 1 over what's inside and then times the derivative of what's inside. Um, you know, just because you'd have to use the product rule and chain rule in there. So anyways, just an observation. All right, here's another problem where, you know, I could definitely apply this rule right from the start to do 1 over what's inside, so I'd have, you know, 1 over 2 over 3 minus x times the derivative of what's inside, which maybe I could apply the quotient rule there. So, you know, it'd be doable, but I look and I'd be like, eh, it'd be kind of nasty. So I would prefer to use this rule right here, natural log of a over b is equal to natural log of a minus natural log of b. And what I could do here is treat, okay, well, the top, the 2 is like the a, the 3 minus x is the b, and I could rewrite it like this natural log of 2 minus natural log of 3 minus x. So when I go to take the derivative now, okay, the derivative of natural log 2, a lot of people might think, oh, 1 over 2, okay? But think, natural log of 2 is just a number, all right? If you pop that in your calculator, you get some constant, some number. What's the derivative of a number? Zero. You know, what's, you know, think, more simple terms, the derivative of 5 is zero, the derivative of, you know, 17 is zero, any number is zero. And then of 2 is just a number, driv 0. All right, so I move on to this one over here. So in front, I got a negative 1. I should probably keep that along for the ride, so I got the negative there. And then it's times, so I do the derivative. It's 1 over what's inside, 1 over 3 minus x, times the derivative of what's inside, which is negative 1. So the negative there and negative there is going to cancel. It'll just leave me with 1 over 3 minus x. So, I don't know, a lot simpler, I think, than doing it originally as 1 over what's inside times the derivative of what's inside.